All right, so I've shown the E200, the Ant SDR E200 before, uh, and all the different things that it can do. I, I want to show like one other thing that uh, I've actually talked about Open Wi-Fi before, but we'll set it up on the E200 this time. Uh, and it's it's pretty cool that this um, that this device is is capable of doing this. So what it is is an open source Wi-Fi baseband FPGA and it's going to run directly on the E200. Uh, what's re uh, really cool is, let's see, when was it uh, here recently? Uh, okay, so maybe not that recent, but January 28th, this uh, 1.4.0 release actually went to a Debian Buster based uh, build. I think it mentions it somewhere on here. Um, actually, if you maybe go to the latest release, uh, yeah, okay, there you go. So, um, Raspbian 11.2 Bullseye, so Raspbian. Okay, all right. And so what's cool with that is uh, we should be able to get packages uh, such as Kismet to run really easily uh, directly on the SDR itself. And then we we'll, should be able to put the interface, in this case the transceiver, in monitor mode. All right, so how do we get started? Uh, come down here, scroll down. <clears throat> you're going to find a link open Wi-Fi image that takes you to a Google Drive. I've already downloaded that. It's 2.7 gigs. And then what you'll do is uh, you can use something like Etcher uh, or DD to burn that image just like it talks about in this uh, readme over here on the right. I've already flashed the card so we're not sitting here watching something flash for a really long time. And so I'm up to the point where um, I'm going to copy the config files into the boot partition, in this case for the E200. The kernel modules and interfaces, I actually don't remember doing that <clears throat> last time with the E310, so we'll take a look at that. But All right, so look at my directory here. <clears throat> we go into our boot folder, and then if we look for our... Ant SDR, okay, here we go. Ant SDR 200. So we take these files, copy, put them into the root of the, uh, yeah, base directory of boot. So here we go. Delete the rootfs. So you might have to. Go command line <clears throat> or a terminal. So in this case, it says kernel modules, as if I should delete everything. I'm not quite sure why that is. I didn't. <clears throat> I didn't last time, and it worked fine. And then there is no etc directory in the root fs root etc. Okay, so I, I could be a little off there, but this has worked for me. So, all right, eject the SD card. Have the E two hundred sitting here with a network cable in it. I'm going to try and see if I can connect over serial connection because ultimately I want to change it to a DHCP address that the ANT SDR is pulling. So let me open another window and I have ran sudo app uh, install TIO. And so let me try, let me try this. And so now uh, this is like just easy for me to use but I'm, I'm seeing the um, the device boot up I see the 192.168.10.122 which is mentioned here but let's change this to let's see
All right, and we'll change static to DHCP. Should be it. Let's reboot the E200. See, it's got a DHCP address. All right, and let me think. We need to set the time. All right, so I'm back. Um, I couldn't remember which command I used, um, but it's kind of limited as to what's included. I'm sure there's maybe a better way, but let's try this. Uh, since we do have internet, let's see if this is going to work. Mm. Alright, well, we'll give it a second. It's probably... Should be good. So we come over here to, let's see, the Kismet page. Kismetwireless.net. Scroll down. Look for release and nightly packages. And we want to grab the information for Desmi uh, Debian Raspbian uh, Buster. Bullseye. Raspbian or Debian Bullseye. Here we go. Let's try this out. Now this is all directly on the ant 200 so um, I may cut like parts out just so it can finish a little bit faster but this is using the processing and and the RAM and everything that's on the E200 on board All right, <clears throat> Kismet's installed. We'll jump back over here. The only other thing we should have to do on the E200 is, let's see. Go into open Wi-Fi. Run this setup once.
I think now I realize while that that's saying root kernel modules that this wasn't necessarily saying anything that ends in kernel modules probably just kernel modules directory which didn't exist so okay all right so that's done and then let's see shouldn't have anything yet I think we need to run the WGD And so now we have this SDR0 in managed mode. But if we come up to our directory here, we run, let me check the IP address first. So we'll come here, we'll run Kismet. And we're going to go to 2501. 2501. This is the browser on my um, local desktop that I'm recording on. Now I'm jumping over to the Ant SDR E200. I'll give it a username and password. And you probably get some warnings because we are root. And let's see. So there's going to be a lot of activity on this, uh, but I don't want MAC addresses being seen, so pull this down. We're going to go settings, let's see, device row highlighting, uh, let's see, device name, BSSID. Device type catcher. Okay, that should limit what is shown here. And then the only other thing is pull this down some. So we're going to go here. We're going to go data sources. Give it a second. We see the SDR0, Linux Wi Fi enable source that's going to put it in monitor mode right there and so now we got activity and so we'll give it a uh, minute here it's not um, necessarily the most uh, sensitive with these with these antennas but it does work in monitor mode and okay there we go so just to show that the E200 is running open Wi-Fi. We've put Kismet on it, and it's capable of going to monitor mode and getting results. So a lot more you can do with open Wi-Fi. I just wanted to focus on that one particular thing. And then maybe next time I'll come in and do some other things with it. All right. Thanks.